the Holy Spirit and God, amen. May the Lord bestow upon us his blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom, and now and ever into the age of age. Amen. Today is the fourth Sunday of the blessed month of Baba, and as we were saying, in this month we see the Lord's power over every aspect of our lives, um, and not only his power, but also the response of God's strength and power in our lives removes the sadness from us. Um, as the Lord saw her, the, the woman of today, the widow of Nain, um, her, who obviously her father, her, her husband passed away, and her only son also um, departed. So it says, when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and told her, do not weep. And the Lord is also saying to us today and this month and every day of our lives, do not weep. But some people may respond when they hear the saying, um, didn't she have the right to be sad? And don't we sometimes also have the right to be sad? The woman of today, her circumstances were very dire. Her livelihood was crushed. Her future was bleak and dismal at best. <clears throat> Yet she had every right to acknowledge her emotions and her grief. But when the Lord spoke to her and told her not to weep, um, sometimes it doesn't make sense to us. Um, because even in the same verse, it said the Lord had compassion on her. So he's having compassion on her, but he's telling her not to weep. Um, <clears throat> and then other people will respond and say, well, this doesn't make sense either because didn't the Lord uh, shed tears at Lazarus's death in, in front of his tomb? <clears throat> um, so the answer is yes, and it's kind of a little bit complicated, but when you look at the different words in Greek, when the Lord wept versus him asking this widow of today not to weep, the words are different. Um, Christ's response was more a silent shed of tears, but this woman's weeping that he asked her not to do was an un uncontrollable type of sobbing and moaning that is usually accompanied with a very deep grief and loss of hope. So, um, what that means is the Lord is, is not telling us not to have emotion. It's okay to have emotions. God created us with, with hearts and capable of, and that's what distinguishes us from robots. He doesn't want us to be robots in our lives, and he doesn't want us to um, not to experience these emotions. However, as spiritual beings and as um, mindful creatures, we can't allow those emotions to take the best of us and to lead our lives and our actions. <clears throat> if you know or if you become someone who, who is this type of person where their heart is guiding their whole life only, then your life is a, a whirlwind of sorts. One day you're up, three days you're down, right? <clears throat> One day you're happy, strong. Another day you feel very weak and angry and bitter. And if you know someone like this, you try to sometimes avoid them, even if you love them, and care, because uh, it's it. Uh, oftentimes, you can't, you don't feel like you can help this type of person. Yes, they can vent for a little, but sometimes they leave the venting session worse than they came in. So uh, sometimes it, it this happens because you know there's a, a, an imbalance of sorts. And it's a type of sickness. But oftentimes, for, for most people, it's for a ver variety of reasons. Either because we say, this is who I am. Just get used to it. So stubbornness. Um, or I'm getting old. I'm lazy. I don't want to change. Other people, it's because they're, they're ignorant. No one told me I was like this. I don't know why. Now I understand. right? Um, or it's just because of lack of depth or introspection. So... Um, someone that's not mature um, mentally or spiritually can, can fall into this pit. Even oftentimes, some people with the most brilliant minds can fall into the same mistake. Just turn on the news or look at social media, and people are acting and responding based on their emotion. Um, even if they have the right um, viewpoint, um, they, they still are acting improperly. 
they get so consumed with how right they are, how right they think they are, they don't care what they do or say or how they make other people feel. Right? Or even within the family, um, a spouse may feel like they have the right to humiliate or disrespect their spouse or, or their children because they're wrong and I'm right. Um, <clears throat> or even within siblings. Right? Sometimes even we see this in the church, unfortunately. <clears throat> we, we respect all people and give room for, for people to have opinions, but we also respectfully uh, disagree with teachings that are wrong. Um, for example, St. Cyril of Alexandria, um, who, who basically led the Third Council um, against Nestorius, before this, um, he was trying to direct, Nestorius was a patriarch, I think I mentioned this before, um, and as a patriarch, uh, he, he was teaching um, the wrong thing about who the Christ is. And uh, because St. Cyril and Nestorius were both patriarchs, St. Cyril had to correct him as best as he could, but with respect. Even if you look at his letters, he, in the beginning, he, he, uh, he uh, writes in his introduction to his letters to the most religious and beloved of God, fellow minister Nestorius, despite that he had the completely wrong understanding of who Christ is. Um, but he's respecting his priesthood. However, after the council excommunicated him and stripped him from his rank, there's no need for, for this uh, respect. Anyways, um, so the question here is, am I able to disagree with others and still respect them and love them and give room for them to say their op opinion? Or does it give me a right to treat them improperly? Um, <clears throat> oftentimes we do this. Um, there's many now, if you look in the news, there's a lot of polarizing issues out there. Um, we as a church don't of officially take stance on that. But it's causing division and it's causing a lot of disrespect, even in the church. Um, and this is not what we're called to do as Christians. <clears throat> we're called to do the right thing and to state our right opinions but also to respect each other as human beings. Um, <clears throat> so that's one problem. Um, another problem is we let our emotions affect our livelihood, right? Um, I'm disappointed that I didn't get that promotion, so I'm not going to work hard anymore. Or my parents didn't get me what I, I want, so I have the right to disobey and disrespect them. Um, you treat me wrongly, so I have the right to insult you. Um, someone dear to me passed away, so I have the right to quit my job and just, you know, feel sorry for myself for years and years and years, <clears throat> right? This is not the way the Christian is supposed to respond, right? Um, so, so the question is, how are we supposed to respond? Um, how are we supposed to function? And I, I've described this before, where we as creatures... Um, made in the image of God, have mind, body, and heart, and spirit, right? Um, but how do these two interact, or these four things interact? Um, our mind basically tells our heart what to feel, and our spirit directs our mind what to think, okay? So the spirit directs the mind on how to think properly, and the mind, based on what it's thinking, eventually has an effect on how the heart feels, okay? So um, just like a, um, the captain of a ship steering um, the rudder, right, or moving the rudder left or right, and that moves the entire ship left or right. So you can say the ship is the heart, right? And um, the the rudder is our faith. It's... it's, um, it's as the Psalms say, be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart, right? So the faith is what strengthens the heart, right? And the hope is what is the anchor of the soul, as St. Paul describes. Um, <clears throat> because if we don't have this anchor, then let's say the ship is stable or you finally get to your destination. The faith brings us to the proper de destination. But how do we stay in that right mindset? We need an anchor, um, and the anchor of the soul is is the hope of God. 
<clears throat> so the Lord is asking the widow of today um, not to eliminate your emotion, but to have it at, at, at bay, in, in control. Um, and the emotion, just like the boat, can flare get, or can go up and down with the vicissitudes and the waves of, of life. But when there's an anchor, it can't go very far. So it's okay to respond emotionally to certain things, but not to let it control our thoughts and not let it uh, to, to we don't make decisions based on how we feel this day or the, or, or the next. Um, so uh, what keeps us grounded is our faith and our hope in Christ. Um, as the psalmist says, my heart is steadfast. My heart is steadfast. So if our heart is steadfast on the heavenly things, then we, we won't be all over the place, um, spiritually and emotionally. Um, the widow of today could have lost all hope and trust in God because she lost almost everything. Um, but instead, the Lord asked her to trust in him. Um, and this is not as easy as it seems. It's easy to speak about it, but it's hard to live accordingly. Um, so the Lord wasn't just asking her to control her emotions. No, he was asking her to reach deep down into her strong faith and think about that faith in the proper heavenly spiritual mindset so that the emotions would eventually be um, not controlling the life. Okay, so it takes practice and diligence. In most circumstances, the spirit can train the mind how to think and the mind can train the heart how or how much to, to feel. Okay, um, so it's not... So some people use the phrase brainwashing, right? Or heart washing. It's a type of rinsing and cleansing or baptizing of the mind and the heart. And so that's why the prayers and the spiritual life and the contemplation help cleanse the mind and the heart so that we, we are not going to extremes when we live our lives. Um, those extremes especially um, um, due to the the emotions. So what do I do? What are some of the steps we can take to be better at this? Because um, we could always improve uh, in this area. So I think the first step is just to build more of an awareness of myself, um, especially my emotions. Um, sometimes, so we have to acknowledge them. I feel like this, right? Usually they say happy, mad, glad, sad. Those are like, you know, some, some of the basics. But it's not just, that, that's like maybe just the first step. Um, and then we have to understand, well, why am I thinking and feeling this way? Sometimes it's justified and it's okay to feel a certain way. The Lord was angry at times. Um, but as the parable says, we have to separate the wheat from the weeds. Okay? We have to separate the, the, the good emotions based on you know, the right type of thinking, which are limited, <laughs> versus the wrong type of emotions which are leading to my wrong thoughts or, or stemming from them. Um, and I'm, I'm basing my actions you know, on those. So we have to identify the source of, of what's helpful in terms of the emotion and what's not. Okay? Um, so that, ha that needs a lot of uh, time with yourself and with God and evaluating yourself. And, and oftentimes, um, this is what the Father of Confession is, is, is there to help with, um, at least to, to some extent, because usually um, it's not just our feelings that, that need to be corrected, but then our actions are also um, and, and leading to sin based on this. <clears throat> so what else can we do? Um, simply, instead of trying to vent, you know, uh, online or with my friend who probably won't be my friend for very long because I keep <laughs> complaining to them about hundreds of different things every day, I vent first and foremost to God in my prayer. It's okay. Um, <clears throat> and this atmosphere usually helps keep my emotions in check and my thoughts in check because if I say something wrong in prayer to God, of course he knows, right? And I know that he knows. And even it sounds funny when, when I'm venting, you know, in, in prayer to him. Um, so this is a process. 
Um, <clears throat> and, and not only that, but also with my spiritual guide and father of confession, we discussed some of, some of these issues because usually it's the same cycle of things that get me um, upset or angry or sad. And sometimes, or most of the time, these thoughts are wrong. They're just flat out lies that I'm telling myself and I'm believing myself. Um, or it's, it's an improper influence that I have in my life that's telling me this. Um, so, so I need to look for um, how to correct my, my thoughts and, and, and in return that will affect the way I live and the way I feel. Um, <clears throat> and sometimes even I look at everything and say, okay, what can I change? The widow, the widow of today, she couldn't change anything in her life. Death is death's finality. Um, but uh, even if there's no change outwardly, inwardly I respond differently. I think differently toward it. I put the heavenly mindset. Okay, fine. I need to bury, uh, bear with it and carry the cross. I need to seek the Lord for comfort. I need to put my heart and my mind and my eyes on heaven and not on the earthly things. I need to do the best at what I have, and God will reward me eventually. Um, I need to seek the future and not just um, have anxiety or trouble or, or sadness over the past or even the present. <clears throat> so uh, the last thing is when you look at the same word that we were talking about weeping in Scripture, we still ask, see that God is asking us to weep in certain circumstances. For what? What do you think? Over our sins. So God God uses the same word, okay, don't have this type. When he tells the woman, okay, yes, your situation is very difficult, but don't give it an opportunity to give to, to let you have the, the grief with groaning and hopelessness. But when it comes to your sins, we don't do this enough. We don't feel this way enough. Um, and so our repentance is not as strong and our, our, our confession is less often probably um, because like, like Simon Peter wept right after he re realized that he betrayed the Lord, this, was the, this is the type of, of, of weeping we need to do over our sins. <clears throat> um, and this is what the Lord is calling for us to do. He said, he said you will weep and lament, the Lord says, um, but the world will rejoice. The world is rejoicing over, you know, the physical pleasures of the world, but you will weep over your sins and lament over your sins, and then your sorrow will be turned into joy. Um, <clears throat> so this is how we have uh, the joy in Christ, is by trying our best to, to weep over the right things and not to weep over uh, the, the ups and downs in our life. May the Lord give us this anchor of the soul, the hope and the faith and trust in him, so that um, we rejoice over the things that are worthy to be rejoiced in, like the salvation, and we bear with the difficulties in this life by His grace. And glory be to Him now from to the age of us. Blessed.